the GSB is distinctly African. And I want to make sure that we are an African business school. And not only an African business school that speaks to South Africa, that speaks to the African continent, but that builds a bridge between Africa and the rest of the world. I want us to tell the real story of African business. And that real story of African business is not only very different than what you see on CNN, but it's the story that so many of you, so many of the GSB alumni, not only live every day, but actually had a part to play in building. I think we forget that we're living in a time where the world's, the global GDP is the highest levels it's been since we started measuring GDP over 400 years ago. Certainly it's the highest it's been since we started even with a mercantilistic system of, of economics over a thousand years ago. The world today is wealthier than it's ever been. Global life expectancy, even in the presence of a global pandemic, life expectancy is higher than it's ever been. There's we, the world has never been wealthier and human beings have never been healthier. And I say this just to make this as a closing point, that regardless of the challenges we face, and sometimes the backlash we might face for speaking our minds, it's important for us always to place in context those who came before us and the risks they took. If my grandfather dared speak his mind, he might have been killed. If my father spoke his mind, he might have ended up in jail. If I speak my mind, I might trend on Twitter. Now, I don't know about you, but trending on Twitter doesn't seem awfully uh, punitive when I put it in that context. And so I think the reason a lot of us don't have the courage of our conviction and we are not vocal about injustices as we see them is simply because we're scared to stand out and for public ridicule. What you miss is that injustice thrives, not because people are unaware of it, but because you don't have the courage to speak on it. I had the opportunity to join Ozania Masaka and Wendy Nola for an extended interview on 702 Radio on how airlines, and ourselves in particular, were going to manage customer expectations in light of the circumstances. They were thrilled when I explained that customers using vouchers for their bookings values would get 20% off future bookings. And they guffawed when I explained that those seeking cash would get a 45% penalty. In hindsight, a competitor who did go into business rescue offered customers seeking cash refunds the opportunity to become creditors in their process. They ended up with one cent on the rand, so 45% didn't seem so bad after all. Worse yet, on that interview we took live calls from actual customers who I had to talk to on air. But by that point the approach before me was clear. All I could do was ask for trust. I had to push through the anger, the frustration and the anxiety that fuels it all and offer a response that was warm, measured, and evidently considered. It all came down to trust. So when I'm asked how Flysafe has survived the COVID-19 pandemic thus far, the best summation that I can offer is that we managed to win trust from those affiliated to us. We didn't always win favor, but we did fetch their trust. And with hope, they will find that trust well-placed. I'm passionate about Asian food. Look, I love all kinds of food. If you look at this and see, she's all the right bumps in all the wrong places. Um, but I, I love food, but I am particularly passionate about Asian food. And the reason why I love it is because it, it's wonderful, it's light and it's healthy, lots of colors, lots of flavors. So I thought we'd do a little visit um, to Thailand. And um, I have this massive papaya tree in my garden that never ever gets to reach the stage of ripeness because I like green papaya salad. So I thought, let's do something with chicken and some green papaya salad, lots of ginger, lots of garlic, that kind of thing. Relevance is going to affect your existence. Then question you need to start to think about, and even when you go home is this, how to be and stay relevant so that you can make a real difference with real value, with real impact. Stay connected. The ABCs of an organization in decay. Says this, how many of you have heard about the ABC of an organization in decay? You, the minute you have this, you are in trouble. A stands for what? 
arrogance. We've done this. No worry. We are safe. No, no, no. We just stick with what we know. A stands for arrogance. B stands for what? Bureaucracy. C stands for what? Complacency. You don't need to have three of them. You just need one of them. What you'll encounter first is going to be disconnection. When disconnection takes place, you'll experience decay. Then if you still choose to be John Cena, you know John Cena, you still choose to be John Cena, this decay is going to be turning into decline. Unfortunately, this is still what we see in the boardroom. A socially just society is one that embraces the humanity of everyone, and it's a society where everyone feels that they are recognized, they are participating, and where they have been disadvantaged in the past, they are compensated for that. So a socially just society is not a society that is indifferent to difference and disadvantage. What I really did uh, during uh, my eight months was to attempt to put a stability, a predictability, an openness and an accountability back uh, where it was lacking and it wasn't universally lacking uh, within the functions uh, and activities of the GSB. And I had an enormously wonderful eight months uh, there uh, with, uh, uh, despite some initial misgivings from some uh, a, a really a very positive and productive uh, response from the vast majority of the employees of the GSB. Fellow alumni, my name is Costa Contos and I'm an alumnus of the Modular MBA program from the class of 2009. Myself and 11 other past students serve on what is called the Alumni Board. The mission of the Alumni Board is to represent the best interests of the alumni, which ultimately means that as board members, our primary focus is to help the GSP as best we can to look after our brand so that we can continue to build our school into a globally respected institution over the long run. The board is comprised of alumni representatives from current GSP programs, including in alphabetical order, EMBA, MBA, MCOM, MPhil, PGDIP and PhD. Our board members also represent a diverse spectrum of age, experience, race, gender, and year of graduation from the GSB, spanning the MBA class of 1967, right up until the PGDIP class of 2017. We meet four times per year for a couple of hours at a time. And outside of these meetings, we do quite a bit of work behind the scenes to help the school in whatever way we can. Board membership is voluntary and members serve for a minimum of three years, although five years is ideal. And then at the end of a board member's service, when they step down, we invite a new alumnus from the same program to take their place. So with that in mind, we are currently looking for an alumnus to represent the M4 program. If you are indeed an M4 alumnus and you believe that you can represent the best interests of our fellow M4 alumni, then please consider joining us. You can send an email to Maria, who is the head of the alumni relations department, using the email subject alumni board MPhil representative, and we'll take care of the rest. Now, say that you'd love to help, but you don't have much spare time. Perhaps you are a parent or a CEO or both. Well, one way that we can all easily help our school is by donating to the GSP Foundation. If you go to www.gspfoundation.org.za, and click on the big red button on the top right. It says donate now, you can't miss it. You will see how easy it is to sign up. Of course, before you start donating, be sure to read the rest of the website to learn about the foundation's history, its mission, its protected structure, and how the proceeds are dispersed. There are many of us watching this, right? So let's just say that 200 of us signed up to each donate 100 Rand per month. That means we could raise around a quarter of a million rand per annum, which we could use to fully subsidize one student or assist with hiring the best international lecturers or conducting groundbreaking research or even building world-class facilities such as our new conference center. And that's just 200 of us. Did you know that around 5,000 alumni were invited to this online reunion? Imagine what we could achieve as a school if all 5,000 of us signed up to donate 100 rand a month each. I reckon we could do some wonderful things at the GSB. 
So please go to www.gspfoundation.org.za and click on the big red button on the top right. And it goes without saying that if you have more than 100 rand to spare, then please sign up to donate whatever you can comfortably afford. And perhaps even rope in the rest of your classmates to see how much you can raise collectively as a group. And finally, to Maria, Kalvisa, Linda, Alan, Darren, Farad, and everyone else from the GSP alumni and marketing departments that helped make this virtual reunion happen, including the alumni volunteers that helped tie it all together. Yes, you, Kate, and Stephen. On behalf of all alumni, thank you for making this weekend possible and for looking after our alumni family.